everyone, it's Michelle from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be making a mini slimline card using the stamp set Off to See the Wizard from Kindred Stamps. So unfortunately it is retired, but I am going to be using it because I've never used it before. And we're going to be using a couple of the images to create the slimline card. So the card base is six and a half by four. Now this is a little bit larger than the slimline card that I made using the Create and Inspire kit for Halloween. That was six and a half by three and a half. But this card base, like I said, is six and a half by four. The white panel that we're going to stamp on is 65 pound Recollections white cardstock, and it's cut to six and a half by three and three quarters. Now I'm inking up the castle image with Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink because we're going to be doing some Copic coloring. And I know this isn't the normal weight paper that I use when I do Copic coloring, but we're not going to be doing a lot of blending and it's not going to be right on the card. So that's why I decided to use this. Now I originally drew out the yellow brick road in pencil and then I realized all I have to do is connect the image down to the corner of the card so it was pretty easy I didn't actually need to do the pencil marks so I'm going to be taking my ruler and just using my micron pen to create this it's kind of like a forced perspective the road gets wider um, the closer it gets to you so we're going to be doing that and then we're going to be doing some masking to create this yellow brick road. So there you go, I'm just drawing in that last line. And I do get a little bit of the black micron pen on the right side of the image. You can kind of see it there where I'm trying to erase it, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be using distress inks and distress oxides that will cover it. So now I'm taking this stencil and I believe this is also from, it's either from Kindred Stamps or from MFT. I can't remember where I got this one from. I just have a bunch of uh, stencils in folders or in uh, little albums. I'll show you guys one day when I do a craft room tour how I store my stencils. But I'm using Distress Oxide in, in Squeezed Lemon to go over the middle of the yellow brick road. Now I'll realize in a minute that I do have to mask off. There we go. I have to mask off the castle. Um, I was kind of off of my game today. I forgot to do that. And then I realized I cut it too short. So I have to add another piece in there. And I forgot to put that piece on my skin to kind of take a little bit of the stickiness off. So I don't know. I don't know what my problem was. But anyway, going back over with the squeezed lemonade, in the middle and just kind of bringing out to the sides a little bit. I'm going to go in with mustard seed on the sides just to darken up the edges a little bit, you know, in the places where it w I feel like it would be the darkest. So once I've created the yellow brick road, then we're going to take the masks off. And I love that. I left that reveal in here because I love when you take off masks and just the way that it just has such a it's just so satisfying to see that. Now I was very careful here because there's the piece that I didn't uh, rub off on my skin to take some of the stickiness away. And we're going to be using those pieces of washi tape again. And here's another place where I'm like, what did I, die? what was I thinking? So I took those pieces of washi tape, lined them up now on the inside of the yellow brick road because we are going to be doing the grass and the sky. And then for some reason, I decide that I'm going to put washi tape on the castle. I don't know why I didn't just mask it off. My brain wasn't working, I guess, because I'm not I'm not working at all this week. So maybe that's what it is. My brain was kind of shut off. But now we're going to create a mask out of copy paper. I'm just using that same ink to stamp up the, the image real quick. And we're going to fussy cut it out and then use the Zig two-way glue pen to add a little bit of glue on here. And this is my favorite way to do masks. I don't really own any masking paper. I think the only masking paper I own is from one of the Crete and Inkspire kits. And I haven't used it yet. But I'm just putting a little bit of glue on there, letting it dry, and then applying it to my card. So much easier than just using the washi tape. I don't know what I was thinking. So I don't have mowed lawn in distress oxide. I only have it in distress ink. So I decided to use distress inks inks for the grass and I am using peeled paint and mowed lawn so this is mowed lawn 
And I like the way that looks. That was the one that I really, really wanted to use. I guess I will have to pick it up in uh, Distress Oxide. So I'm going in again with both colors on the left side now. And for some reason, I think that I got a little bit too aggressive. And when you when I pull off the right piece of washi tape, you'll notice that I got a little bit of green on the yellow brick road. But I'll show you how to fix that. Um, I made a couple mistakes here with the Distress inks and Distress Oxides when I was doing this. So now I'm pulling out a brand new Rabbit Hole Designs Cottontail Blending Brush and using some Distress Oxide in tumbled glass, just getting that ink on there and going over to the sky. Now there's going to be pieces of the masked image that you're not really going to get in between, but I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. I'll that's why I keep a lot of my mistakes in there because, or things that just didn't go right um, because I like when I see how people problem solve and fix those things. So as you can see, like between that really tall arrow looking building on the very left and the one right next to it, there is a little bit of a blank space and it's going to be white and it'll look awkward if we don't do something to it. So I tried to put the brush in there, but it didn't really, because it's not tiny, it didn't really get in that area, but I'll show you how we fix that. In a couple of minutes so not that one but when I take this next one off you'll notice the little green line so but we'll fix it character goes there you won't even be able to see it in the end I'm just taking my blending brush and I did pick up a little bit of the green but again it doesn't really matter so I'm just laying my layout out so there's those three characters the girls on the top right the um, tin boy is on the middle left and then the lion is on the bottom right and that's how I wanted it to be and now I'm putting them in my misty inking them up with that same Catherine Puller midnight ink because we we're going to be doing some Copic coloring now I did cut most of the Copic coloring out because it was a little bit repetitive um, I don't have great color combinations or any great tips for this to you know it kind of was just I colored it. I didn't really do a lot of blending. I just kind of got a little bit of color down on the paper and um, didn't really worry about it. That's why I cut a lot of this out. I am using this 65 pound cardstock from Recollections. So I also didn't want to saturate the paper too much because it would start to bleed and because it's a very thin paper. So I'm going to show you the Tin Boy in the coloring so I'm going to do most of it with the exception of his hair really I think that I think I show you everything else now I'm going in with C5 and just mapping out the darkest areas and on the I guess the oil can or oil the funnel on his head I'm just doing a little bit of flick marks I will keep a center highlight and um, I just you know mapped out the areas and then I'll start going in with the C3 and pulling that color out a little bit and starting to fill in the image. That's really what I do. Um, again, I'm just doing what kind of looks right to me. Uh, I'm trying to get better with this camera angle. I think I like the other the angle from the other day a little bit better. So I'm going to try to remember how to do that. Or maybe I just put my um, image in a better spot. So now we're going in with C1 and pulling out that color a little bit more. I'll go in with C0 in a couple in a minute to blend everything out together. But just be really careful when you're going in with the lightest colors. The lighter the color is, the more that it will kind of act like a colorless blender. And um, you know, you just don't want to go over those highlights that you created and you did all that work. So again, I was just trying not to saturate the paper and not go over colors with other colors with the exception of right there. So after that is done, I'm going to go in with some of the end markers for the X. Now I wish I would have gone in with a little bit lighter end colors. I go with N8, N6, and N4. Um, I think that it was a little bit too dark, but Again, it, you know, I started coloring and I color, went with the darkest color. I probably should have started with the N4 um, and then just worked my way down from there. But I also didn't want it to be too light to be like him. So, you know. So now I'm going in with his skin E70, oh, sorry, E42 
to do the highlights and then E00 for to color in the rest of his skin. I do go in with an R20 to put little rosy cheeks in there. And then I cut them all out with my brother's scan and cut. And I went around the edges with a black marker just to give it a finished look because the brother's scan and cut doesn't always give clean, crisp image lines around the images. And now using a colorless blender on her dress, I was just trying to create a pattern and it didn't really work out that well. So I go back in with my jelly roll pen and draw designs on there. If you get up close, you can see the texture on her dress, but because it was such a light color, it didn't really work. Um, so I probably wouldn't waste my time doing this again, but it did give the dress a little bit of texture. So I guess not all was lost. But we are going to now color, get ready to color in the castle. So here you go. I'm using YG markers. So I use YG25 to create shadows in the darkest areas. Then I'm going to go in with YG23. YG13 and YG21. YG21 is the lightest color to color these in. Now this is for the card making exchange, the, uh, the Facebook group um, that I belong to. There are four swaps that are due next month if you wanted to participate in them. There was a gatefold one, there was a slimline one, um, Christmas one was actually, there was a Christmas one that was due today, it had to be out in the mail today, um, and then there was one more, I don't remember what the other ones were, oh, I think it was a, oh, there was a recipe one and a do anything, the Christmas one was actually November, it was a recipe card and a, like, dealer's choice, I guess, um, I only did the Christmas one and the slimline one, so, I wanted to do something that was a little bit different than slim, a traditional slimline. So this technically, I guess, would be considered a mini slimline card. Um, you know, I just kind of made it the dimensions that looked right to me. So slimline card kind of is just anything that is longer than it is wide. So, I mean, I guess you could consider an A2 size card. Okay, so here we go. I went in with a Copic marker in B00, I believe, just to fill in the case. And you can't even tell where the Copic marker is versus where what I did with the Distress Oxide. So that's a simple way to fix that kind of, um, you know, if you can't get your brush into somewhere, pick a Copic color or a marker that is close enough and people will never, ever know. So now I'm taking my MFT On Point Precision Glue and gluing all of the characters down. There you can see that I glued that lion right over the green spot so no one will ever know. Unless you watch my video, you wouldn't know. And then we're going to take some ATG and put this on the front of the card. Again, just making sure that there's a strip on the left and the right side, a little border on both sides. Um, actually, we there's little fuzzies. I had a a bad cut I guess on this so I'm taking my scissors and just running them down the side of it just to kind of get rid of those little like there's little like leftover pieces I guess now using ATG and putting the glue on the back of it again lining it up to make sure there's as even as a border as possible on the left and the right but making it flush on the top and the bottom because we made it six and a half which is what the card base is now we're going to get ready to stamp on the inside, which I don't normally do, but I wanted to put a sentiment on this one because I'm sending this off. So we're going to be using MFT Sweet Tooth Pigment Ink. And it says it's not about the destination, it's about the journey to get there or something like that. I'll read it to you when we uh, when I stamp it out. I can't remember exactly what it says, but we're going to use MFT uh pigment ink in Sweet Tooth, which is my favorite white pigment ink to stamp in. I'm going to use my Misty because I did have to stamp this a couple times again because it's pigment ink and I have never stamped it before. So I wanted to stamp it on the inside. And while I was waiting for this to dry, because pigment ink does take a while to dry, I actually took two of my uh, Distress Distress Oxides and kind of placed the card so that the white part was in the air so that I could work on the front. So 
So I'm using glossy accents on the Tin Boy. And don't they look like precious moments? I just think they look so darling. They're just so cute. I'm just using some glossy accents on the Tin Man and a Tin Boy. And then I'm using uh, some of the glitter glue on her shoes to make them like red slippers. So red sparkly slippers. I just kind of made sure it didn't come glopping out because I've done that before and completely ruined my project. And I thought at this point I'd be so angry if I ruined it when I was like this close to the very end. I'm going to go in with my white gel pen and make sure that to put the dots back in their eyes because sometimes that actually kind of gets like lo that detail gets lost and then put a couple of dots on their cheeks just for a, a little bit of texture. And then that's the card. That's every Oh, I'm sorry. I use my Spectrum Noir sparkle pen and go over the castle and just add some sparkle and shine to that. So I hope that you enjoyed this card making video and learned a little bit about how to make a mini slimline card. If you have comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. And I will see you guys again real soon in the next video.